Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I've got a beautiful cheese stuffed meatloaf. We're going to do in some cast iron on the Weber kettle grill. So stay tuned. <music> Everybody likes comfort food and meatloaf is one of the nation's favorite foods and it's great left over to make a meatloaf sandwich. I doubt that any of this one will be left over but if you make a big one, man I tell you what, that makes a great great sandwich the next day for lunch. And also we're going to make a cheese stuffing for the inside, basically it's just going to be some cheese but we're going to wrap that joker in some bacon. So let me show you what you're going to need to make this beautiful and delicious meatloaf. So today we're going to be using our Lodge cast iron loaf pan for a meatloaf. I wish they made one a little bigger than this, but uh, so far they don't. So. If you want to make this for a larger portion or more people, you'll need two of these or your regular meatloaf pan if you're doing it in the oven in the house. But you can do this oven in the oven just as well as you can do it here today. But as you know, the Backwoods Gourmet, we haven't cooked anything in, in the uh, inside the house yet. I got a couple eggs. I got some plain bread crumbs. I got some of our uh, special uh, steak and brisket rub and uh, try to find the link to you or uh, we did a video on this like five years ago on how to make this yourself so we did that same recipe we got half a cup of diced onions had some spray olive oil right here I used that to coat the inside of the pan I got some Munster and some uh, Monterey Jack cheese right there probably won't use all that I got a pound of thin sliced regular bacon. I have a uh, just over a pound of ground chuck and a pound of ground turkey so that we can kind of lean this down just a little bit. If you don't have the turkey go ahead and just use. Since we're adding the bacon we decided to offset the bacon by using some turkey. All right. Uh, that'll try to you know eliminate some of the oil that's going to be in it. You, although that we're going to be pouring a lot of that off. All right, and you need a bowl and some stuff to mix it up. So let's go ahead and get it ready. Let's just start out with uh, opening up our packages and just dumping this in. Here's our ground chuck. Let's get the turkey. I love ground turkey. How about you guys? If you like ground turkey, leave a comment. Okay. Leave a comment right now if you like ground turkey as much as I do. I haven't used it in quite a while. I don't think we've ever used it on this channel. But I use it uh, when we're not filming. Occasionally. So I'm just going to kind of mix these two together. And if you want, just get in there with your hands. And it doesn't have to be fully incorporated. Just kind of chop them all up together. So you're going to get a little turkey, a little, little ground beef in each bite. And uh, as usual, our new puppy Cabela is running around under my feet. Hopefully she doesn't attack the tripod. She's in a wide open mode right now. And uh, so stick around for the puppy bomb, which will be coming up later. All right, so into that, we're gonna season that pretty liberally. We want some good seasoning in it. So this is uh, salt, pepper, garlic uh, base with thyme uh, and rosemary. And if you want those amounts, uh, like I said, I'll try to leave you a link in the description below where you can go see how to make it yourself. 
And that particular season right there has let me walk in three or two out of the three pro barbecue competitions that I've entered. Two out of three we actually got to walk. That means we got an award. We had a second place in brisket and a seventh place in brisket against some uh, pretty big teams. All right, so we got the season in. Now I'm going to go ahead and dump all the onions. I'm going to put those right in there. That's going to help with some moisture level too and flavor. So we're going to incorporate the, all of the onions right into the meat. So we'll get that done and I'll show you how to put it together. And uh, by the way, we already got our Weber kettle grill preheating. So I got my uh, onions in there the way I put pretty well incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and put two eggs right on top of the mixture. We need a binder here to hold this whole thing together so it's a loaf not just a big ass hamburger. So I'm going to go ahead and mix these in and then get it all nice and wetted up. Alright so I have both eggs in there. I'm going to go ahead and give it maybe two three tablespoons of the breadcrumbs and this is going to kind of be a by eye little thing here um, it's going to depend on how much meat you have how big a batch you're making but you definitely want to fold it over and over and get some of those breadcrumbs in there soaking up what egg you got so we'll give it a few more keep folding it over and uh Basically what you're seeing is when it starts to become kind of thick again because it got a little bit, you know, a little soupier from the egg, it's moisture we put in there, right? So basically what we're wanting these breadcrumbs to do is soak up that egg that we put in there. Now you can get in here with your hands if you want and make sure those are totally 100% incorporated. And I may do that but it seems to be coming together pretty, it's getting kind of doughy now. You see how it's like, turns like dough is kind of staying together. And that's what we want to make a meatloaf, right? We don't want it all falling apart when we slice it. Okay, here's for the bacon wrap part. I don't, I don't think there's any easy way to do this, but I just usually just take, uh, start getting my bacon strips out take a few out at a time uh, but to what you really do want to do for sure is you want to lay it in there loosely you don't want to stretch it okay um, and it's not it's not uh, easy okay we want to lay it in there so it conforms to the shape of the pan and it may not completely cover the top and that's going to be fine because we're going to put some sauce on it at the end you definitely want the bottom to be covered so I try to find the middle of my bacon good idea is fold it straight in half put that in the center and you want each uh, strip to overlap each other Take a pretty good sized scoop of our meat mixture. It's probably enough. And I'm just gonna take go ahead and take the back of the spoon. I'm gonna press it down in there. I want it to be about three quarters of an inch thick in the bottom. And use whatever you need to, to try to get that three quarters of an inch in the bottom. And that looks pretty good ain't got to be perfect 
All right. That looks really good. Now I'm going to take another smaller scoop, put it on this end. Might be a little bit too much. I want about a half inch of meat on the ends of my loaf pan. Okay, it's going to seal in what we're going to put in it in the middle. All right, a little bit more there. About a half inch there. Remember, we're trying to save enough to make sure we got some on top too. All right, so however much meat you got, make sure you're you're uh, making it go farther. Again, on the sides, about another half inch. bread basically just like that man is that beautiful or what All right, just last thing go ahead and give it just a little more seasoning on top there All right, and now we're going to start folding this bacon back in and you're not going to get the whole strip the strips are just not long enough to go all the way under the bottom believe me it's the flavor that you're going to want here and that's kind of why we did that ones down the middle so I'm going to pull it now you can stretch these out a bit okay if you can if they'll stretch bringing them over just like that All right. and then we'll bring these ones that we put in the middle bring those right over the top that's going to take that space that's left from the others all right now if you got a favorite barbecue rub you might want to put some of that on it at this point I will uh, wash my hands and we'll give it a little dust of some Texas plum right, go ahead and dust this with your favorite whatever your favorite barbecue rub is just don't go crazy and try to use a, something with a lot of sugar in it it's going to have pretty good cook time. Okay, Weber kettle grill set up. Uh, I've already got my, these are sweet potatoes that uh, we're already putting directly over our two Weber charcoal baskets. We're running our grill at 350, 400, somewhere around there. Try to keep it close to there as you can. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put our meatloaf right in the middle. Right there. Okay, check my potatoes. Some of them are getting pretty close. So I'm going to take that one off of direct heat, put them over here to the side. These smaller ones are going to cook a lot faster. And I've kept my flip ups over these coals in case we have to add some, uh, some more to finish up. Again, Put back on, it's going to hold your heat, make sure your vent is in line with your food.
right, folks, it's been a few minutes, about 10 minutes. I did put some more coals up at about seven or eight more coals in each basket. Right now I'm going and checking on sweet potatoes and they feel pretty done. So I'll go ahead and take those out. Also, I'm gonna take my meatloaf and I'm gonna spin it. You see that bacon is he's rising up a little bit. So things are starting to get going, but we're gonna go ahead and take these sweet potatoes out now. And uh, we're gonna give that meatloaf a, wait a little while longer. It's been uh, about 20 minutes or so, and now I'm starting to see all the juices coming up around the edges. And to get this to finish up really well, and to get some of the bacon a little crispy, you're going to have to drain some of that juice. It's coming up out of the hamburger and all that bacon and there's no real easy way to do this so over here on the side we have Mrs. Backwoods' um, famous her famous uh, meatloaf sauce I would give you the recipe of that but uh, Rachel Ray and Martha Stewart have tried to been trying to get that that recipe into their hands for years now so um, we're not going to give you the recipe that but it's some tomatoes tomato sauce some ketchup some other uh, Worcestershire and some other top secret ingredients in that sauce so we just got that over there on low simmer and uh, here in a little while we're going to be putting some of that on top of our meatloaf. So Houston, we have a problem. We got a cheese blowout. All right. So that means we probably went a little too far. We'll take just a little bit of our sauce and I'm going to paint it over the top of the bacon just give it it's still bubbling over here so just a little sauce we'll give it a couple more minutes it did get up pretty hot uh, got up about 450 before I cranked it back down again just a couple of minutes gonna go ahead pull that lid off of there and uh, man, I wish we hadn't had this cheese blow out, but probably left it a little too long, but it looks awesome. Let's go ahead and take it off. Go ahead and serve this up backwards gourmet style. First of all, I'm gonna just dribble a little bit of Mrs. Backwoods famous meatloaf sauce on the tray or on the plate. I'm gonna go over here and cut us a slice of the cheese stuffed meatloaf and uh I'm, this is still hot, so it hasn't had a chance to set that cheese yet. I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just take some of that cheese that's in the bottom of the pan, put that back in the center. All right. So I tell you what, you can see it's got a little smoke ring on the outside of it, right? That's from that, from cooking all that charcoal. And pull out one of our sweet potatoes baked also on the Weber kettle. Go ahead and give that a little slice open. Still nice and hot. Put us a nice chunk of butter in there. All right, start melting now. 
And now we got just a little bit more. Man, that sauce is awesome. But I don't want to totally cover up the top of it. It's going to put a couple little dribbles of sauce on the top. Maybe a little bit more on the plate. Over there. And for garnish, you got a couple of sage leaves. Stick those right in that sauce just like that. There you go. That is a cheese stuffed bacon wrap turkey and ground beef meatloaf from the Backwoods Gourmet. So you want to buy that, I know you do, all right? And everybody on the channel always wants me to taste the food, I, you know, and I'll just say this right now, you can't trust the chef's opinion of his own food. That smells and looks awesome. Just a little bit of smokiness on the outside there. And we got that, that cheese. Cheese on the inside. Wow. Sweet potatoes baked on the Weber kettle. You know, doesn't take as long or as much heat to bake sweet potatoes on your Weber. Weber as it does a regular potato and um, they have lower carbs than regular potatoes not saying they have no carbs let's get some of uh, Mrs. Backwood's sauce on there wow mm. really adds a lot of flavor so if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there. You can subscribe to our channel right over here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right up there. And for a whole playlist of cooking on the Weber Kettle Grill, be right up there. We'll see you next time.